welcome back uh, from the coalition center in Abel Kuta, the Ogun state capital. A few more uh, local governments taken there, but a break has now been announced to wait for some of the local governments that are being awaited, and they expect to reconvene at 11 uh, o'clock. That's the Ogun state uh, INEC uh, Coalition Center. Even though there were, some people didn't want to take that break. Yes, they wanted things to continue. Yeah. Uh, of course, everybody wants to get this process over with uh, as soon as possible. And that's beginning to show that uh, uh, in uh, some of these coalition centers where these uh, delays are, are there. Of course, since we took that, um, uh, the INEC Coalition Center in Abe Okuta, we've since been joined by Channel Television's uh, data uh, consultant uh, Baba Jide Ogunson. Jide, nice Good to have you with you. Beaming smile there. It is interesting to see that um, some results are coming out, but no results yet from the northwest, surprisingly. No results yet from the northeast. And we expected that by now we'll know what will happen in River State. And still, no result from the south south. If there's enough time, we should talk about River State and what exactly. Um, is going on and what should ha will perhaps be the solution in the future. But what we'll notice is from the results that have come out, we've seen Abia State, Kwara State, Lagos State, and Enugu State. The interesting thing is we see similar patterns. Again, 29 states went into this governorship election, Nyota. 16 of these states during the presidential election, President Buhari's party, the APC, won 16 of these states. And the opposition party, the main opposition party, the PDP, won 13 of these states. Same trends have happened. Abia State, presidential went to PDP, governorship went to PDP. Kwara State, presidential went to APC, governorship APC. Lagos and Enugu State, similar patterns, similar to what I predicted um, mm -hmm. yesterday. We call you a prophet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a prophet of the polls. Prophet of the polls. Oh, yes, yeah, the prophet yeah. of the polls. And yes. that's why you're smiling, because you're thinking, yeah, I was right. But you know, there was a question you asked me yesterday, Ijema, and that was, what will these elections be remembered for? Do you remember the answer? Oof, you no. used the word lies. Yes. I used the word lies, yes. We talked about um, looking at um, location. location, irregularities, looking at um, sexism, I think you said. Sexism as well. Ethnicity. And ethnicity. ethnicity. We'll talk a bit about that. But I'd also t reminded you that people don't change their minds easily. Yeah. Mm. I people that. don't change their minds. Let's cast our minds back to this time in 2015, exactly the same 29 states. President Buhari won 18 of those states. President Jonathan then won 11. But what happened then in the governorship election? In those 18 states that President Buhari won and the APC were declared the winner, the APC during the governorship election won all of those 18 states, excluding one, Gombe. Same thing, those 11 states President Jonathan won, all those 11 states, the PDP won in the governorship election, excluding three states, and then was Nasara, Plato, and Imo states. So the summary for viewers is that 84% of the times people that vote during the presidential election will vote the same party during the governorship election. But Jide, is it the case of everybody held on to their strongholds, or is there anywhere where there was an upset and an APC state was taken by PDP or the other way around, or even though we don't want to talk about states now? No, we're talking about 2015. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. Given, no, you know, about, going by antecedents. Yeah, and I'm talking about, about now. It's, it's quite simple. The, those voters that voted during the presidential election are the same voters that will vote during the governorship election. And so it is often difficult for a voter that voted one party two weeks ago to all of a sudden, two weeks after, to say, no, I made a mistake. I will vote another party. So we've seen that in this results announced so far. And my expectations, even though we don't want to speculate and we shouldn't, is that we're going into, the results are coming out for all the 29 states, but it is highly likely that the majority of the states that the APC won during the presidential election, they will win majority of those states in this governorship election. Same thing with the PDP. Majority of this, within these 29 states, the PDP won 13. It is highly likely that they will win more than 50% of this state when all these results uh, are released. And then once the results are released, the next thing now goes to our focus should be on performance. Uh, I'll take you, staying with this um, yesterday's elections, but not the results now, let's, let's look at the participation. The numbers that, that voted in the presidential elections dropped in the government uh, governorship elections. 
and significantly so, using Lagos for instance, just about 900,000 um, votes were cast, or valid votes, as um, the ANEC official there said. But in the presidential elections, there were over a million. It, it's, it's, that has been the trend for over four decades. Um, and it's also because of how the elections are being marketed. So um, a lot of emphasis goes into the jackpot. It's the presidential is the jackpot prize. So once the elections are done, once everybody has known the winner, you've participated in the jackpot, then there's less of an incentive to come out to vote during the governorship election. So if you look at the states that had extremely, severely low voter turnout two weeks ago, those are the same states that have low voter turnout this time around. So Lagos and Abia states were the two states that had the least, the lowest voter turnout. Lagos and Abia states, voter turnout of just 20%. Okay, um, Mr. Efion, um, the voter turnout, let's look at what Jide just said now about the way the electorate appears to look at things. You look at the presidential elections as the jackpot. You look at the governorship and state assembly elections as uh, neither here nor there. But the argument should be, or there's that, the argument that says people should be more interested in the governorship and state assembly elections because those are closer home. Is that what you think? And it, it is basically a structural problem that uh, the electoral process is just a victim of the Nigerian structure. What I mean is this. When we have a system in a country that the emphasis is in the president, everybody wants to go to the center. There is so much power concentrated in the presidency. The, pre the, the executive at the center does basically everything. The executive determines what allocation goes to the states. The executive controls the revenue. The executive controls the security architecture. It now becomes a matter of life and death on who becomes the president. Whereas governors at the local level, the local government level, the state level, is what is actually is at that level that governance is closer to the people. You now have Nigerians being largely disconnected from governance at this grassroots because of a structural imbalance in the country. So I am suggesting that to redress this trend of voting in the country. It is not just about publicity. It is not about the enlightenment of the voters. We need to look at the Nigerian structure. We need to look at a federation. That explains why you see so much emphasis on who becomes the president. But you know that even the constitution as it stands, there are things that the local government and the state are supposed to handle. But maybe they're not handling them effectively, so everybody tends to look at the federal. Gide, what do you think? It's, um, it's also because of the amount of um, money that is involved. Those that campaign to be president spend more money. So people are also interested in their <laughs> campaigns. So it's the trickle-down effect. The presidential is where money is, then followed by the National Assembly, governorship, and the House. But when it comes to influence, listen carefully to this. At the House of Assembly, we've got 990 members. In fact, 991 total members in the National Congress, I'm talking about Senate and House of Reps, 360 plus 109, 469, and then only one president and vice. So when it comes to leadership, we've got more leaders at the House of Assembly. In each zone, there's a minimum of 100 House of Assembly members. So going forward, we perhaps need to change the narrative. We need to encourage more people to contest the House of Assembly elections and also understand the responsibility of being a member of the House of Assembly. So you're in the House of Assembly, then you influence decisions and policies that, happen, that are happening at the state. But you did, sorry, I just wanted us to look at also what happened yesterday in terms of the history of a particular state, looking at rivers now, where that has, everything has stopped now. And we don't know when the runoff will be or when they will conclude, even the ones they, uh, from the presidential election that were outstanding. Looking at the history of that state and what it's like any time they come out to vote, what do you think they can do differently to be, you know, what can rivers do differently? More than what rivers can do, let's talk about one problem that rivers has and then we'll look at one solution. One problem, one solution. Why is Rivers keenly contested? <clears throat> it's because of money. 
between Rivers and Aquaibom, between when this government came in in May 2015, listen carefully to this, between Rivers and Aquaibom, between May 2015 and last month, last two months, January 2019, between May 2015 and January 2019, Rivers and Aquaibom have collected one trillion naira from the Federation account. Just think about that. Statement of fact, one trillion naira. In simple terms, look at the IJ. In your assuming you are Rivers, and in Jama you are Aquaibo. Even though it's the other way around, but, <laughs> it's, it's the, but it's fine. Imagine you were both given 750 million naira every day. Mm. That is the amount of money that has been shared that has been shared between both states. 750 million naira every day. So that is why there's violence. It's so a it goes back to this issue of winner take all. It's, it's the winner take, takes all mentality. The jackpot thing. The jackpot. So, the, so that's the problem. Let's make no mistakes about it. It's a war on money. Who controls the money? Now what's the solution? The solution is for us to have accountability in state government expenditure. So once the states are accountable to the people, once they disclose every money that they sign for and they spend, then whoever is, that becomes governor, whoever is, that intends to be governor knows that every amount of money spent will be accounted for. You're accountable to the people. Then few people will be interested in who becomes governor within the states. Just again, imagine between May 2015 and January, one trillion naira to two states. And so what happens is because there's no accountability, this, a lot of money is coming to the states. And by, make no mistakes, I'm not saying every money that um, goes into the states is spent um, on, on, on um, unaccountable things. But the evidence does show that there isn't transparency in budgeting across several states. Mm -hmm. There isn't transparency and, ex and um, disclosure on how much and exactly what these monies are being used for. So it's again a war on money that can be corrected by we implementing a war on accountability. Mm. In fact, uh, I'd yes. Like to, yes, to, in fact, to corroborate what he has said, using my state as a case study, Aquaibo. Uh, yes, I'm particular about that state. Under the current governor alone, Udumi Manduel, I have gone to court as an individual, at least on three occasions, seeking to enforce the Freedom of Information Act to get basic questions on expenditure of public funds. <laughs> they never respond. We have a situation where a governor currently is using 10 billion. You can verify this to build a economical center. Uh, it's time for us to go. It's no, time for. I'm sorry, we've run out of time. These are issues. Uh, Mr. Ifyong, um, maybe on uh, on another session we'll be able to take that on. We've completely run out of time. So let me thank you for being our guest on this segment. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, Ifyong is a legal practitioner. Uh, Baba Jide Ogunsawa, of course, is. Uh, 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 data consultant here yeah, on channels television. And next time we'll talk about lies, location, and don't, irregularities. You're not going anywhere, like, yeah, 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 not, yeah. <laughs> No, you're not escaping because you're you know not, the verdict you're not studios. allowed to go. Sorry, you're not allowed Sorry, to go. Sorry, You know the verdict studios is still open. Oh, we we'll continue. But there's so a lot of you're not going that anywhere. I'll be making on the news at ten as well, so you shouldn't. Oh, miss that. fantastic! You see. <laughs> anyway, time to go. I want to thank you for being uh, with us. Uh, the verdict continues uh, after the news at 10 which is coming up next uh before us here let's go back